Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. At the moment, there are so many topics that I want to talk about. So many things are happening in Germany, but I think I should wrap this up first. I talked almost exclusively about Thüringen and what happened in Erfurt this week. And now there is new movement in the case. There seems to be a conclusion and I want to relate to you what happened there. There is also a state election in Hamburg at the moment and there are other recent events, tragic events that many of my subscribers told me they are interested in. And these videos are also on the way. I did research on these topics and the videos are in the making. But right now I really want to wrap up the Thüringen story. So for all of you guys who watched my previous videos this week, I want to make it short now and uh, tell you right away what the outcome is. And in the later part of the video, I want to give you the details and explain a little bit about it. Before we continue with the video, I really like to thank my subscribers and my patrons. You guys help me immensely to make this kind of content. If you like these videos, like, share and subscribe and consider making a donation or becoming a patron in order to support my work. So after Mr. Kemmerich, the democratically elected governor of Thüringen, was forced to step back, the politicians of the major parties in Thüringen, they met behind closed doors and discussed how they could stabilize the state and resolve this uh, unpleasant situation. What they came up with is now that the CDU as a faction will not vote for the socialist candidate Mr. Ramelow as a whole faction, but instead they will make sure internally that he gets enough votes to be elected governor of Thüringen and this election should be held very soon. There will be no new elections for the parliament that Mr. Ramelow promised will take place next year in April 2021. And I'm sure we can all take his word for it that he will step down from office and abdicate next spring as he promised. Now, as you can imagine, the German state media and the mainstream corporate media are all praising him and this um, consensus now, this compromise to stabilize Thüringen. And everybody, the Green Party, the Socialist Party, the Social Democrats, the Christian Democrats, they're all in favor of this. The unity among these parties is so large they love each other so much and they're in so much agreement with each other that they should probably just tear down these walls of separation and just, you know, form a new unity party of Germany. How about German unity party? Or even better, make a statement with a little bit more content and call it Socialist German Unity Party. Or in German, as we would say, SED, Sozialistische Einheitspartei Deutschlands. That would be a true democratic signal to the German people that we don't tolerate division and uh, hateful rhetoric and that all democratic forces are all working together in order to fight against evil patriots. All right, I hope you can forgive me for this sarcasm, but uh, it's really hard to stay serious in this clown world of ours. Who would have thought that 30 years after the reunification of Germany, it would not be Western democratic values that would gain the upper hand, but instead Soviet Union socialist communist practices and values would actually be embraced by a majority of Germans. And that is, of course, if the polls are correct. And we all know that the polls are always correct. Politics these days is made with demoscopic data. And demoscopic data tells us, for example, that Bodo Ramelow is a very popular man in Thüringen. In fact, they tell us that everybody except the voters of one very evil party thinks that he's doing a great job and that socialism is a great thing. That is in the state of Thüringen, of course. And I could not imagine that they would manipulate these polls by knowing exactly what zip codes they need to probe in order to get the desired outcome. No, I, I really couldn't imagine that. But the polls tell us something else. They tell us 
that if there were new elections for the parliament right now, Angela Merkel's CDU party would actually lose a large part of their seats in the regional parliament in Erfurt. And this is of course the reason why the CDU guys in the faction in the Landtag in Erfurt are not interested at all in new elections right now. They would lose all their monthly income and also maybe you ask the question why the April of next year is so important. Well, according to paragraph 13 in the law that deals with MPs, members of parliament, in April of every year their, their retirement benefits, their pension benefits are rounded up one year. That means once you make it past the April line, you have more pensions to look forward to later when you retire. And this is why the very democratic compromise that was agreed upon to the benefit of all people in Thüringen, of course, is such that the new parliament will be elected only in April next year and not right now. See, our parliamentarians are only acting in the best interest of the people. All right, and there is one fishy tactic or one fishy thing actually that I mentioned already and that is the CDU faction says we will not as a whole faction vote for Mr. Ramelow, but we will somehow make sure, right? What does that really mean? He needs, I think, four votes from the CDU so that he has a majority with all his red, red, green leftist bloc and four votes of the CDU. Now these votes are of course secret yeah nobody knows in the end what mp voted for which candidate for governor and now there are many techniques how to do that one thing that was suggested for example is that among the faction of the cdu they would actually draw straws kind of and whoever pulls the shortest straw has to vote for ramelow then it's kind of a lottery and by lottery, four people will be decided who have to vote for him. And it's very democratic. That's so democratic. I love indirect democracy. Have I told you that already today? Indirect democracy is the best. That's the only way you can actually have democracy, I think. The case for a lottery is, of course, that the poor parliamentarians of the CDU, they cannot really, in good conscience, vote for Mr. Ramelow. So their conscience, you know, and their convictions like conservative values and free markets and liberal values, they, they just don't allow them to vote for such a socialist. But if there is a lottery, well, then I guess they have to. And it is, of course, funny how Ramelow says now there is no agreement with the CDU. We didn't talk to them at all. But I have the feeling that I can look forward to a majority from a broad democratic party spectrum. What a bunch of BS. Of course, they talk to the CDU. And uh, they use some mental acrobatics and some sophistry, playing with words basically, to fool the general public. They say that the CDU does not collaborate with the party Die Linke, they are forming a constructive opposition. So an opposition that's not an evil, quarrelsome opposition, but an opposition that supports the government. And instead of collaboration, they call it a project-oriented collaboration. And see, there's a big difference there. I have learned a lot of new words today. I feel so much more educated now. And speaking of dirty deals, there is another thing I found out recently. The question was initially why Mr. Ramelow actually stepped into the ring as a candidate for governor and uh, he was kind of humiliated in parliament and he was furious afterwards when he wasn't elected in the first two rounds and then of course when Mr. Kemmerich was elected in the third round. But the question was if he knows that he doesn't have a majority in the Landtag, in the state parliament, why is he then throwing his head into the ring? Well, the answer is very simple. He thought he had made a deal with the CDU. He thought that he had an agreement. He said he talked to many powerful people in the CDU and he was under the impression that there was a toilet deal that was made with the CDU. Now, he said he made those toilet deals many times before and I thought we had an agreement. Maybe I should explain right now what a toilet deal actually is. Well, it's very simple. 
if a candidate doesn't have a majority in a parliament, uh, but he still wants to be elected the leader, such as was the case for Mr. Ramelow, as I just explained, you can reach agreements with opposing parties that say that a couple of their guys are excusing themselves to go to the bathroom while the election takes place. And then you can, with this reduced number of parliamentarians being present for the election, you can actually reach a majority. It is basically a fraction where you change the denominator. That means your percentages will rise as the opposition candidates leave the room and are no longer counted as present voting MPs. So you spare them the humiliation and once again the conscience, the guilty conscience. You spare them all that by not forcing them to vote for the opposing candidate but you kind of leave the building or you leave the room and then you're no longer counted. Have I told you already that indirect democracy is such a wonderful thing and that we, the population of Germany, should be so grateful that we have this wonderful system that we don't have to think about politics ourselves anymore and it's so tedious to always vote on stuff. No, it's so nice. You can just be ignorant and have barbecues and watch football. It's so nice. All right, so Mr. Ramelow was under the impression that there is such a toilet deal going on and he was maybe not so careful because he posted that on social media. He posted on Facebook that he discussed this maneuver um, with the CDU. Unfortunately, just one day later in a political talk show, he lied to the public by saying that he doesn't know about a deal like that. So maybe he posts so many things on Facebook that he forgets what he posted. Sometimes he also deletes posts. For example, when he calls Josef Stalin his Genosse or his comrade. Now, of course, the socialists in Germany say that this is just his quirky kind of humor and he doesn't really like Josef Stalin. But then I dare ask the question why he deleted that post then. He could have just said, well, that's just my quirky kind of humor. I'm a funny guy. Because as we all know, freedom of speech still allows you to make jokes, right? Okay, so maybe you guys, my esteemed international audience, you know a little bit more about the guy who will be the new old governor of Thüringen very soon. And this is of course what I have predicted in my previous videos, because this is what Angela Merkel wanted, this is what all the other parties wanted, and of course the CDU will lose a lot of credibility with their old traditional voters, because as you remember, there is a consensus, there is a binding decision in the CDU that they do not collaborate with the party Die Linke nor with the AFD and they have broken that now. They have now reached an agreement that they will vote for Mr. Ramelow of the former Socialist Unity Party of Germany that now goes under the name Die Linke. And that is a direct collaboration, of course, with that party. That is a totally different thing than if a liberal party member just is voted into office, among others, by votes of the AFD. It would have been a different thing, of course, if the FDP parliamentarians would have voted into office an AFD governor. The other way around, I think we can all agree, is much more severe. So here Angela Merkel's CDU is directly collaborating with the party that ruled the country that Angela Merkel grew up in. What a coincidence. Of course the CDU leadership, the federal leadership, must now act all surprised and all outraged because they are in damage control mode. But this is of course all a stage play. This is not real. In fact, they're okay with that because they themselves have become a socialist party by now. There is no more Konrad Adenauer and no more Ludwig Erhard left in this party. They are a socialist party just like the Green Party, just like the Social Democrats and of course just as the SED now known as Die Linke. All right, so once again, a friendly reminder that indirect democracy is truly the best system ever. It is so wonderful. Oh my God, 
And it is also wonderful to see that all democratic parties in Germany are finally working together and they have formed one big union party so that all this infighting among Democrats and all this division is soon a thing of the past. And we can look forward to a brighter future where we all march into the same direction. In which direction? Of course, forward to the sun, to progress. All right, as always, be safe wherever you are. Servus, Kameraden. Den Sozialismus, so sagt man bei uns immer, in seinem Lauf halten weder Ochs noch Esel auf.